<laughs> Yo, guys, we are back for Apron Academy, the demo, part two. If you guys missed part one, you guys should go check out the playlist I have in my description below. Um, hopefully, we'll see. I don't really recall what we did in the last episode. I think we just, we kind of just went to the part to where his uncle, maybe we, you know, his uncle showed up with all the things. Not, I'm not really sure, but let's just get right into this. Nothing more than this. I took the remainder of the night packing what I could before passing out. I woke up, though, to the loud pounding sound of a fist slamming rapidly against my door. Tyler, get up. Okay, then. Never mind. Mm, what? Your uncle's here, wanting to see you. It's time, my voice. Oh, fuck. I turned my head quickly to see the time on my alarm clock. 7.30 a.m.? He was already here? That is nothing compared to what I have to do. I have to get up at 5 in the morning, every day. I quickly jumped, practically vaulting out of bed, and got dressed into a set of clothes that I didn't pack. I didn't have time for a shower, but I didn't reek, so it didn't matter to me. I rushed to the door and opened to see my dad staring at me. Watching the frustration in his eye melt into surprise at the sight of my mostly packed room somehow felt satisfying. I didn't tell him that I had gotten a job, and apparently neither did my uncle. You're all packed? Where are you going? Uncle Seymour got me a job. He told me to pack before he got here. My dad scanned my room, taking in the sight. Before he looked back to me and nodded, as he stepped back to give me space and exit my room, I mentally gave myself a high five. Mentally... Physically. I made my way out of my room and walked into the front room, seeing my mother and uncle sitting on the couches. The moment I entered spurred them to turn their heads towards me. And there's her uncle. He's as black as me. He, he He's as black as me. I looked at my uncle, surprised to see him not in a military uniform, but in some sort of butler's outfit. That was the last thing I expected to see him in. Yo. I like... Caggy. I like how you just casually say, yo. Good morning, Tyler. Oh, so he's the disembodied voice. Okay. My uncle stood and looked and looked me over before walking over and standing over me. He was a bit taller than me, so I had to look up at him. I felt a little intim a bit intimidated being looked down upon. Um, Seymour? What are you? Before my mother could finish, my uncle began to circle my form like a vulture. I followed his body with my head and eyes as much as I could without turning my body. What was he sizing me up? Yeah, why are you sizing me up? You wanna go, bruh? Wanna 1v1, one one, mate? I'll stop. I'm sorry, guys. At, la at last, he, ste he stopped in front of me and turned to my mother. I was just making sure Tyler was physically fit enough for the job I gave him last night. Uh, what? What? A job? Why you sound so surprised? I mean, that's what you wanted, right? This is what you wanted, Mom, right? What? Physically fit? That statement practically screamed that the job involved manual labor, making a part of my soul die a bit. I was going to regret this. I knew I was. I mean, I do manual labor for a living. It's not that bad. I mean, I prefer to be doing manual labor instead of sitting at a desk doing nothing. Yes, I'm talking about you, corporal, corporate officers. My dad finally joined us and sat with my mother on the couch as my uncle stood by my side. He had perfect posture with his hands and clasped behind his back. His back. I felt small and slouched just standing next to him. He will be working for me until he figures out what he wishes to do as a true career. I plan to move him out immediately, if that is all right. My mother opened her mouth, most likely to protest, but my father placed a comforting but firm hand on her shoulder, stopping her. Yeah, you better don't you say a word. Our son has a job. Nothing more needs to be said. Tyler, are you sure about this? I'm pretty sure about this. Oh, now he wants to know if I was okay with this. I nodded, resolved in what I had agreed to do. I'm sure. Besides, you wanted me to get a job as soon as I could. And I did. I had to throw an extra job at him, an extra jab at him before I left. My dad seemed to miss it, though, as he nodded and looked to my uncle. If he causes any trouble... Hey, I resent that. I'm not going to cause any trouble. I'm positive he won't. The work he will be doing will require complete discipline, which I'm sure Tyler has. 
Well, thank you, Uncle. Thank you a lot. Thank you. I was genuinely surprised at my uncle. He really thought I had potential? Really? Maybe this job wouldn't be so bad after all, at least with him as my boss or manager. I got to say goodbye to my parents before packing my stuff into a moving truck that my uncle brought. More surprises. My entire room was cleaned out and I was out of the house. Why would they clean your entire room? Like, wait. What's up with that? Why, why would they clean his entire room out if he's just going to have another job? Oh, okay. Never mind. When I walked towards the truck to ride passenger, however, there was there were two men already in the seats. What the fuck? My thoughts exactly. You'll be riding with me, Tyler. Okay. I looked at my uncle and almost felt my jaw drop out of his sockets from the sight. In my driveway, hidden by the side of the house, was my uncle slowly easing out towards the street in a luxury car. What the hell? The back, Tyler. Okay. What? The back? The back. We don't have all day now. The back. The back. I grimaced. I wasn't a kid. Why did he? S why did he want me to sit in the back seat? That was dumb. I rolled my eyes after closing them so my uncle wouldn't see my irritation as I made my way to the back seat door. I opened it and slid open without a second thought, not noticing the large men in suits inside with my uncle. Okay then. Okay. Music slightly creeped me out just a little bit there. As a hand with a piece of cloth suddenly covered my mouth, my eyes shot open and looked around, finally seeing extra people in my car. Before I could thrash and protest, my mind suddenly began to feel fuzzy and my eyes unwillingly closed. I could barely make out my uncle trying to speak to me as he rolled up his window. Relax. You'll be awake by the time we arrive. This is shady. I'm sorry, guys. This is very shady. Like, super shady. Then I became victim to the darkness of my mind. What was going on? Why did my uncle let men drug me? Where is he taking me? I was panicking, but only in my unconscious thoughts. I couldn't feel where we were going, nor what was happening. I prayed to every deity in the sky that I would make it out of this situation alive and apart. Finally, I was able to wake up. I was lying down in a very soft leather seat, but I was staring up at the roof of a car. Was I still in that damned vehicle? My head was pounding violently, causing me to groan and cover, cover my forehead with my hand. What the hell happened? I had a million questions running in my mind, but they only added to the pressure that was pulsating in my skull. You're awake. Right on time, too. Good. Alright then. <clears throat> I turned my head to my uncle's voice to see that I was inside of a limo, far away from the driver's seat and partition. Hey. Anyone? For those... I was gonna sing a song, but I forgot the lyrics. Fuck. It was gonna be... It was gonna be Beyonce partition, but I, I forgot the lyrics. I'm sorry. Damn it. The window was rolled down so I could see my unders. I could see my under. I'm assuming that's just a correction grammar. Staring at me as if he had been waiting for me to finally shake off whatever drug he, he dosed me with. I mean, maybe he didn't dose you. Maybe he just gave you a little bit and you just couldn't take it. Huh, Tyler? <laughs> my rage flared at the sight of my uncle and I rolled off the sea I was on. Not caring about me slamming onto the ground, I glared at my uncle, quickly readjusting myself despite the short height of the limo. What the hell? Why the fuck did you drug me? You know, it's so cool hearing Kagi's voice. I feel like I'm talking to Kagi. This is a dream come true. My uncle seemed unfazed and simply got out of the car. I watched from the tinted windows as he walked around and opened the door out of the limo. Out of the limo near me. I had to make sure you couldn't know where we were. Okay. Very shady of you as well. I instantly stepped out of the car and stared dumbfounded at my uncle as he closed the door. I wasn't allowed to know where I was. What kind of job was I getting into? You're going to be a stripper, Tyler. You're going to be a stripper. We're sorry, but you have to do this. The look on my uncle's face, however, hardened to something cold. Ah, excuse me. Which made a slight wave of fear rush down my spine. Was secrecy really important? This job is top secret government business. From here on in, you work for the government on a private project. Okay, this is gone CIA. The government is involved? Yes. You are you are theirs now. You are under their control. Yes. So I expect you to do the best work you can. Understood? 
Understood, muchacho. This is in, this was insane. This was truly and honestly insanity at its finest. I was drugged, practically kidnapped at this rate, and now I work for the government on a top secret mission project thing I had no knowledge about. This was turning out to be a marvelous first day of whatever the hell job this is. My Hyundai looked. Excuse me. Oh God, I keep sneezing. Looked at his watch inside. One p.m. We're early. It was one o'clock already. I turned my head to look at the sky, wanting to see if the sun was in agreement with the time, but suddenly stopped as my eyes landed on the building we were parked in front of. What? You can just tell what time it is by looking at the sky? What is this mutiny? Oh my god. Oh. My. God. We were parked in front of a mansion, standing, standing at the steps of its front door. It was huge, and I felt incredibly small, just measuring the size of it. Measuring the size of it with my gaze, my uncle made his way up the stairs, pausing halfway up to look down at me. Come along now, don't gawk. But I like gawking. This building, this mansion, looks like it needs to be gawked at. Let me gawk it. I was going to work here? I followed, still taking in the sight of the building and not believing what I was doing and seeing. This had to... This had to have been a dream. There was no way I was stepping up and most likely about to walk into a luxury mansion. As I reached the top, I stared at the front door as my uncle approached it. My uncle proceeded to remove one of the gloves and pressed his bare hand on one of the handles. The soft echo of the random cybernetic blimps trickled through the air reply. However, instead of the door opening, some sort of panel opened up the side of the wall. My uncle fiddled with it blocking it from my sight for about half of a minute before the door finally let out a large click sound. Yeah, this is very CIA. This is very CIA, man. Interesting security system. Yeah. Very interesting. My uncle took hold of the doorknob and opened it, stepping in and making way for me to enter. I followed suit and became astounded by the sight of the interior. I was almost tempted to shout just to try and hear the echo. Ooh, this is fancy. Are you fancy, huh? Are you fancy, huh? Are you fancy, huh? Are you fancy, huh? Nails done, hair done, everything big, huh? Hair's done, hair done, everything big. Are you fancy, huh? Holy crap, this place was really amazing. As my, I don't know what this word is still. Close the front door, I examined the grand lobby from my spot. It was indeed huge with two large stickers and white marble with gold and bronze axes. It took a moment for me to fully absorb the setting. I barely noticed my uncle stepping up beside me and looking around. He looked to his watch and noted it before muttering. Hmm. They must still be on their break. They? They who? Please explain. I looked to my uncle in confusion. Who are they? Ignoring my confused stare, my uncle nodded to me and patted my shoulder. Stay here, please. I want to make sure your room is ready for you. Okay. I shall obey. I shall obey you, my super secret uncle. With that, my uncle climbed the stairs and vanished into the halls on the upper floor. I took the time to really take in the space, barely noticing the quickly building sound of running footsteps heading towards the lobby. Oh shit, nigga. When I finally did, the sound of wet feet slapping the f that tile followed it. Both sets of noises growling louder and closer to my location. What the? <laughs> Catch me, sugar tits! And spontaneous actions are spontaneous. Tanya! Okay, so the black girl is Tanya. Nice to meet you, Tanya. Yo, the one on the right is kind of kind of adorable, can't you say? That's not thing that I could not believe what I was seeing. A pair of girls dressed up in maid uniforms rushing down the stairwell and bum rushing in my direction while looking over their shoulder. What made me almost completely red in the face was the woman that followed. Clad in only a towel, a third woman chased after the sprinting pair as their towel started to fall. However, she managed to nest her abnormally large breast in, in an arm, most likely to help her continue the chase. Give me back my uniform! You gotta catch me first. Tanya, just give it back! Two more girls, also dressed in maid uniforms, popped up by the tall the top railing. 
watching the bout with very amused grins on their faces, the blonde laughed, gripping her stomach as the brunette cupped her hands together to shout at the girls below. Run, bitch, run! Alright then. This is I froze in place, unable to make a sound from the sheer shock of the situation. The pair of girls ran towards me, one of them finally stopping at the sight of me. The girl named Tanya, while noticing me, instead smirked and tossed the clothing she was holding yes, at me. Yes, bro! Uh, uh, wait, 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 wait! There are choices! Okay, okay, I'm gonna stop the video here. I'm gonna stop the video here, because so much is happening. So much is happening. So, um, if you guys like this part of Apron Academy, the demo, um, you guys should slam up that like button as best you could, guys, and feel free to subscribe for more Apron Academy in the future, as well as Pokemon videos and all that good jazz. But, without further ado, be sure to comment which option you want me to choose below. I'm pretty sure. I don't know if it matters or not which one, because, I mean, I don't think it will. But just, just admire this music as I just do my outro, okay? Okay. Yeah. So with that guys, slam up the like button, feel free to subscribe, and I will see you guys in my next video. Peace.